All right. As you know, I'm John Schenholzer, president, co-founder of the McKinn Foundation. Also a person of long-term recovery from substance use disorders. For me, that means I've been clean and sober over 37 years. We're at McShin today doing one of our 2,500 groups of meetings a year that we do here, 365 days a year. Shows up here and ain't over there, stay focused. You're starting already, man. We're just getting going. You're already defocusing. But, uh, you know, the world's not going to stand still for us. How many of y'all in early recovery? See, so we're in early recovery. How many of y'all live in uh, recovery houses, recovery residences? So, that is your home. You know, this is a recovery center where we come, you know, to, you know, work on our illness, plan our recovery, work our recovery plan. We put our recovery action plan together. This is how we learn to stay clean and sober or in a different pathway that keeps you grounded. Now, being how the coronavirus is a big topic right now, a lot of places are closing down, shutting down, or just limiting the amount of people they want in their facilities. And there's a phrase going around called social distance. And here at McShin, starting today, we are definitely practicing social differences. As you can see, our chairs are spaced apart. We don't want nobody to be up on top of each other. We got the new social distance and handshake and hug. You know what it is? <laughs> Who knows? It? Come on up here and show, show, show what the, the social plug is. Just tap your foot. I like the outside. You want to do the inside? The uh, inside? But that's it, man. That's it. That's my greeting, man. That's right. Sit down. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> I think during the end, when we when we close with the serene prayer, we we'll just sit our distance, maybe cross our arms. But you know, this is a real virus for that category of people that are really going to affect the most. You know, and I hear that's the elderly, very deadly. Of course, addiction's very deadly too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I think. We're in the same, probably, death zone. Percent of addicts are definitely going to die of addiction, just like people with corona are going to die. But I thought I'd ask people, being new, it's hard enough being in recovery, right? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of us came from correctional environments, right? Mm -hmm. Jails or prisons. You got something prancing? It's, I was scared that, you know, by me coughing and stuff, they would say, oh, well, she can't come to the recovery house because I just got released. Oh, they were going to keep you there, maybe. Yeah, or they, they oh. I was afraid that she might say, well, um, she can't come to the recovery house because she's coughing and we don't know what's wrong, you know. But it scared me, even though I knew that it wasn't, you know, the coronavirus. So what you're saying is a lot of other conditions out there that might mirror the symptoms of the coronavirus that might prevent you from accessing... Mm -hmm. Goods and services right. in need. And had not it been uh, this particular recovery environment and other being that other places are shutting down, I might have been shut down because right. of my cough. Right. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm grateful that I'm here and I can continue my recovery process and that I had I I wasn't isolated because right. in the jail they don't give you the medical care that you need. You know what I'm saying? So, them not normal. Most, a lot of jails, but not all jails. Some jails Some do a great jails job. Some jails may do, but I'm just saying, I'm just grateful that because I was coughing, you know what I'm saying, that nobody got scared right. of me to the point that I couldn't come and not be a part right. of the recovery house. In well, I think that's the takeaway, man. You know, you, you, as we have some of the use disorders and even other illnesses, we right. still got to go places. Right. Now, granted, this isolated coronavirus, it's a, it's a special, unique, different illness all on its own. Now, but I, I've known for decades people would get tested for the tuberculosis or something yeah. before you could go to rehab or somewhere. Mm -hmm. So we, we have a, a history of being able to test and properly place. But I don't, I don't want this to be about confined environments like jails and prisons, because the truth is they got a hard job to do with the population they deal with. Granted, a lot of those are because of poor policies. Right. I mean, I'm not getting yeah. into all that. I'm just, I mean, my thing is that I'm just grateful that I'm in an environment that right. I can group all day, every day. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? I'm grateful that 
I'm somewhere where I can continue to group all day. I yeah, can that's continue right. to make my 90 and 90 no matter what. And we can do social <laughs> distancing while we do it. as fortunate as we are. But. You mentioned Pamunkey, but I, I gotta say Pamunkey is a wonderfully run that's facility. That's the best program I ever You're right, been. right. The I've facilities been, run good too. Programs, but that's the best right, one I've ever right. been in. Let me say that. Yeah, not all jails are alike. Some jails are right. really more difficult. Right. How many y'all had, had? How many y'all got any feelings about this virus? You got some input? Anybody scared? What do you got? I'm not afraid. Uh, I mean, I've got my own opinions on it. Um, to me, I feel, I mean, it's very real, obviously, but I feel like it's being blown way out of proportion. Mm -hmm. um, especially How many of y'all think they're blowing this out of proportion? I do. Uh, Most uh, everybody. But now look, look about who's blowing it out of proportion. You got yeah. healthcare professionals, yeah. you got doctors. Right. You know, they're the ones sounding the alarm that we got to do something. Right. And, and, and I'm hearing a lot of news about we'd, we'd rather be over conservative, over cautious than under cautious. So, you know, the, the more information I get, the, the more a lot of the stuff makes sense. You know, I'm, I, I don't want to argue with, you know, science and doctors and, and what could happen if we don't do it like this. But, but I think personally, yeah, there are a lot of feelings there, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, holy smoke, you know, it's just the flu, you know. But, yeah, it's a deadly flu that will mm -hmm. kill many more if we don't take action. And, and, and I was thinking, you know, maybe America needs to learn how to shut down for two, three, four weeks at a time in case we get a worse situation, like a weapons of mass destruction or something. So in some regard, it's good that we go through this process to see what it looks like on a large scale. But, but I hear your feelings, too, because I'm thinking, you know, I, how many of y'all have a lot of money invested in a retirement account? Well, I'm here to tell you, I got a lot of money invested. I'm wanting to go down 50 percent, man. And, and I don't know how much more money I can make. You know, I'm getting too old to make money. So. I got extra problems here, you know, but I, I feel you, you know, but finish up what you were saying. So like just for me personally, because of the whole, and I don't think it's a coincidence that certain products that people don't really buy are all of a sudden super expensive and being mm -hmm. sold out. Yeah. Um, so price gouge so like, is taking place oh yeah. and they're going to invest a lot of money in products that we need for the solution. Somebody's going to make a lot of money there, but overall, it's going to be a big economic hit on everybody, but we're going to suffer dearly. There's going to be a ripple effect. Yeah. You know, we're supposed to go out there and get jobs, pay our court costs, our fines, our child support, and we're not going to be able to really, you know, are we going to be able to get a job? You, you know, a lot of people are going to go out of business probably, you know, so we're going to have, we're going to have some, some challenges coming up. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. Right. For me personally, you know, I work, I'm a server, I work in the food industry, so like that particular industry is taking a pretty big hit. Big hit. People are freaking out, nobody wants to go out to eat. I made less than half this weekend on what I made last weekend. So you already lost 50% of your net pay in one weekend. Yeah. You so live in one of our houses. See what next weekend is going to be. You live in one of our houses. Yeah. So, so our bed free collection going to be at risk here. <laughs> yeah, I'm barely yeah. enough to cover yeah, see, that. As an organization, we're going to take a huge hit. You know, I, you know. So for an agency that really isn't funded, that's a big deal to us. Yeah. But, but we're all in this together, so we ain't going to panic. You know, we've been in worse situations, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of us have been on the streets, mm -hmm. homeless. Living in bad situations, well, you know, I'd probably rather have be facing this crisis than facing the judge. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So, what other feelings we got? Um, honestly, speak loud. My name's Chauncey, and I'm an addict. Hey, Chauncey. Well, um, okay. honestly, my opinion when I first heard about it, yeah, it does scare you. I do have some feelings about it, but then on the other hand, I'm like, I'm not gonna stop. Go seeking recovery because I I use the needle. I'm not really scared of Corona until you know something happens. So, so I, you would risk of dying every day. Yeah, every I, day I, you would I risk of dying. Right. So you know I'm still gonna go. I'll still go to wherever they're holding me in here. You we know? just gotta do that social distance. Yeah. You know what I mean? So this yeah. early recovery. We you know social connection is vital for early recovery. Yeah. But at the same time, the very thing that's vital to us can also. Mm -hmm hurt us in a different way. Yeah. And honestly, I feel safe here than having to be out there and worry about, you know, like in the supermarket, all toilet paper's out. Right. I'd rather be here 
you know. <laughs> that was me here out of toilet paper. Then the supermarket <laughs> out of toilet, toilet paper. paper. <laughs> Yeah, we'd so, be black marketing toilet paper around here. <laughs> you feel we get a hit at the smoke shack, now you gotta get toilet paper out there, man. I got a lot hidden, so right. good. Well, it's a, it's a fearful thought. What else we got? I got you. What you got? Um, people saying it's not serious. It's not serious to us, but I just had to go to the hospital today because my 10 month old baby has pneumonia. Really? Yeah, and, that, and they wouldn't even let me go back there with them. They put us in a negative pressure. So you got a two, a two month old? 10 month old. A 10 month old child in the, in the hospital today with pneumonia. Pneumonia. Checking them for it, corona. They're wearing big freaking mask. astronaut masks. And you went there and they wouldn't let you in to see your child? I went in and they kicked me out. They said, You only have one person. It was me or his mom. Right. He to be with his mom. Were you all suited up? Yeah. So we're actually blessed to be here in this environment because life yeah. is still. So you went to the hospital around Corona and brought it up in here, <laughs> man. Did, did they hose you down? Y'all, they put me in like this little uh, thing. That nobody hold this, down. boy. You do that <laughs> foot tap, all right? Yeah, I'll do the foot tap. But life's gonna happen on life's terms. That's I mean, true. It's serious. So we're blessed to be in this environment, not out in that environment. Anybody get the bright idea yet that every day millions of people are getting money out the cash machine and pumping gas? Yeah, and that's why I got plastic. That's yeah. Huh? That um, um, yesterday, uh, uh, alert went out for in tide water for people to go get free food stamps. Free food stamp in tide water? Yeah. To anybody? I figured that the government is the government, so I, I was wondering if they was doing it here. Wow, man. I mean, if they start giving out free food, that's a game changer. Yes. Why not just spend money up at Virginia Barbecue? You might need to check that out. <laughs> Look, man, I, I ain't making light of this situation, but we, we do seem to find a lighter side of a difficult situation. So I want to be clear on that. You know, this is, this is serious. I want to take it serious. This is technically a, a, a really inner circle group discussion. And we just want the rest of the world that can't get out to a group to see what a group looks like. You know what I mean? This is what newcomers are thinking about in a group, you know, sharing that stuff. So I'm really proud of you guys for putting us in a position to be able to do this. Because this might be helpful to people out there. I'd relapse. I'm yeah. Huh? No. Say it. You're going you to relapse anyway, probably, man. But. <laughs> My machine got shut down and it's got, I got sent home because of this. You would use I'd right away. I'd be using by within the next week. And what do you use? Opiates. Opiates. So you would be, you're risk of death there, or risk of death here. Or? Yeah, so I'll take my chance here. You like your chances here? Like chances and we're around the same people, so we're kind of we're kind of self-contained. How many, how many people think drug dealers are practicing good hygiene and and, and, oh, yeah, and, sure. and social distances, man? <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're all offended. I'll come from Wuhan anyway, don't it? I mean, the good news is that virus don't it die after three, four days or whatever, or oh, so many hours, so. Shipping would probably kill most of them before we got here. <laughs> what else you got? My name is Josh. I'm an addict. Hey, Josh. Hey, Josh. Um, I just actually got back from River City talking to Cynthia, and we were the, actually uh, talking. The, that's the outpatient program, mm -hmm. the uh, clinic you go to. Absolutely. Um, we were actually just talking about the coronavirus, and uh, um, we were talking about everything shutting down. And I'm new to recovery. I've never done a program, never even looked into it, but I'm liking what I'm learning here and I'm seeing everything shutting down and how much people need these groups. And what about the addicts that ain't gonna be able to get to a group? Everything's shutting down. Well, unfortunately, the ones that really need it, the one in active addiction, they're, they're gonna, that's an exceptional and vulnerable population. Uh, fortunately, many addicts and alcoholics and people in other pathways who got a little clean time or a little recovery time they're already sort of plugged into that social media connection right. and they're able to access that, but that's not our story. We don't have that foundation or that built up support. And a lot of us don't have cell phones and computers and internet service to do that. Right. So, but you came from jail to here, mm -hmm. and now you're in an outpatient setting where, mm -hmm. where you go out to and you're in the recovery setting. So, so this is a very vulnerable population for life-threatening illnesses. Make no mistake about it. <laughs> You know, and all these other illnesses add, add on to our current situation. But here's the good news. We're having discussions that help take us out of self and think of others in other situations, which is, I think, is a pretty important principle for people in early recovery. Because addiction, self-centeredness is the core of it. Right. Agreed? Yeah. It's all about me all the time. Yeah. So, so this is almost like a, an extra tool in a toolbox if you look at it like that, you know. We get a little extra hit here. We get to talk about getting out of ourselves, thinking about other people, places and things, 
we have an opportunity to have a positive ripple effect, and that ripple effect would be social distancing, keep your wits about you, be as positive as you can, think and share all that good stuff, you know what I'm saying? What else we got? John, I just want to say, um, without McShin, we probably would be in a You'd very, be in jail, because yeah, I know where you come a, a from. Situation. You'd still be up in that big dorm or that pod yeah. or whatever, so, um, complaining about life know, and shit. We get, <laughs> <laughs> you're right, though. I know I'm right, man. Yeah, we get to uh, continue our NA meetings and the AA meetings here just at a distance, you know. Um, you're, you're in secure recovery rather than living. You're still in a recovery herd, but it's got to be a social distancing distance, herd. You know, and um, we're just trying to reach out to the people out there that can't be in a recovery. That's part of what the video is for, is to what, let folks know you're not alone. Yeah, you're not alone. You may not be able to personally get to a group. Right. But you know, hopefully this will this will help you out a little yeah. bit. So and again, I want to. That's good observation, I man. Appreciate it. Ma, what are you doing, man? You back there isolating with your other buddy, man. <laughs> what do you got? You up in your head, man. I'm just taking you, it in like a sponge. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you. Where are you from, Galax or whatever? No. Where well, you, I mean, that's, that's the last rehab. Ah, uh, where are you from, from? Bristol. Bristol. Yeah. Well, that's even past Galax. Yeah. They don't do this in Bristol, do they? No. Nah. nah, man. You glad you're here? Yes, sir. You in the right place? Yes, sir. My, 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 the Marine. God finally sent me another Marine, right? <laughs> Arr, can I get a new rock? Arr, that's bullshit, man. Arr, it's got no teeth, man. No wonder you didn't make it, man. You couldn't get the new rock straight, man. You know how bad that is? What's up, dog? What are you up to? Nothing much. How you doing, sir? Man, in your own business. Um, well, my thoughts on uh, the whole coronavirus. Um, Speak up. We've been through this before. This is not the first time. We had H1N1, we had swine flu, we had bird flu. Um, we just had a, a measles scare. Um, yeah, we're doing measles uh, a, a, a and vaccination. So, and it's always around the same 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 time of year, election year. It's always it always falls within that same parameter where we got a new we got election coming up. And oh, you think there's a little election intertwined in here? Because it's, it's just people are gone. It's just the fact that we had people die from smallpox, <laughs> people died from bird flu, swine flu, and then That's the true. stock of Tamiflu, which is the which is the vaccine vaccination flu, just went up like two hundred percent. Tamil flu. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a. I hope my people invested in that shit. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if you look at Bear. Um, and other pharmaceutical corporations like that, you will see that their stocks are just skyrocketing Sky right now. Just because so you think it's just a natural evolution of crisis and what's available? Think you it's think it's a deeper conspiracy? So, conspiracy. I guarantee within another maybe month, you, it, it, it won't be in the headline anymore. It'll be in the back page of the news. Just like swine flu, bird flu, it all came from what, where China. Mm -hmm. Each case comes every time it's an epidemic like that or a pandemic, it comes from that's the source, you know. So, you think. and then we the trade war with them. Right. So of course, it's going to a lot of correlation. It makes you wonder, don't it? Yeah. I mean, that's you got, what I thought so. You got. I put a little YouTube out the other day with a little Facebook. The the fentanyl epidemic. Mm -hmm. A lot of that came out of Wuhan. Mm -hmm. The this epidemic they say started there. It triggered the financial crisis we're experiencing. So yeah, don't think my mind don't think about. Conspiracy. Weapons of mass destruction, <laughs> uh, conspiracy <laughs> theories. But, you know, on one hand, they're a sworn enemy. This is a stroke of genius. But on the other hand, they're a global trade partner. Exactly. And where's all these, this stuff coming from for the trade? China. So, I mean, you know, we think of a lot of things, absolutely. But, we in group today. That's you, right. You know? We're still here. What else we got? Who ain't said nothing? Laura, you told him to cut that vacuum cleaner up. That don't I count as saying something, no. though. What's going through your head? Um, I really agree with Chauncey, kind of, what she was saying. I think that, you know, when you think about it, like, we're addicts. I was an IV user. Like, I put my life at risk many times a day, every day, for years, so I could get high. So, I mean, I feel like... 
you try to remember harm reduction out there and you try to remember it here and do like the things you're saying, the foot thing instead right. of a hug or whatever. Social, social distancing. Maybe we can, <laughs> we right. can, but like, you know if I would go out and get hot, I can go to a meeting, you know, right. as long as they're there. But here's what, here's what earth people <laughs> are thinking. Mom and dad in the nursing home didn't choose to go out and get the uh, coronavirus. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we choose to go out and use so that they, they, they want to be the mentally ill person up on that choice factor. They don't fully understand the brain chemistry behind addiction, substance use disorders, mental illnesses. So, so I, I also put a little video up there saying that, okay, I'm glad we have a national response to the coronavirus. It makes sense to me. Uh, do a lot of policy shifting, come off of some strict policies, lose some policies, put funding in it. Well, if we took, use the Portugal model here to reduce the impact addiction has in our communities, that would be a, a shift from policy, like relax the policies around that. Use the Portugal drug law policy. Take some extra money, invest it in the recovery. I mean at the recovery level, the authentic recovery, not the special interest groups. You follow what I'm saying? So why do they treat one illness that's not near as bad as the other illness? And it, it, that, that, that gets me thinking sometimes, mm -hmm. you know? And, and most people, I said it earlier, when they're kids, they don't grow up to want to catch the flu or lose their money in a financial crisis or catch addiction. They just don't, you know? You gotta understand the depth of mental illness. But if we can help and fix and reduce the impact one illness has on our community, we should be able to do it for the other. Addiction you know, is right. caused by choice, but we don't say sexually transmitted choices. They're diseases, like. Right. I think it's ridiculous to like, nitpick that the way that people do. Well, like the way you put it. What, what do you got there? You just sitting there. <laughs> I mean, I agree, like, with Damien, like, um, you know, up. we've had all those other kinds of flus, and, like, I know me being a heroin addict for 11 years, like, my immune system is compromised because of all the drugs that I've done, and so I catch colds a lot easier than most people, and, you know, I feel like us being away from each other like you know spaced out a little bit is better for us um i don't know i just want to like stay safe but then again i'm like i was out there using puddle water and freaking you know Woo! crap like that putting it into my body thinking that was okay because i was you know burning. probably rainwater you so, know, you know, in a diesel I, mean, I thought that was okay but now i don't want to touch somebody because <laughs> you know, oh. they're so our, our, we're a very risky population anyway, yeah, you know, we, so we aren't scared of risk. I don't know, like, but I other people are like scared of risk. It's, kinda, it's just different. I don't know. We are an unmanageable group of people. We have a fatal, empirical, a fatal incurable progressive illness. Our end is always the same. Dale, the institutions and die. Yeah. However, we can recover. That's and it true. does begin with don't use, That's no matter what. Or seek medical and addiction professional services and then they prescribe you something, do what they tell you, you know? Mm -hmm. Find a pathway, get on it, don't get off of it, stay focused. Don't let things like national crisis derail us from our recovery journey. Yeah. You follow me? Yeah. Try to keep your wits about you. I'll say something kind of going off of uh, what you Speak into the mic, not down at the floor. Can you hear me? You don't have to get up on it like that. Be <laughs> proud of what you're going to say, man. Going off of what she said, though, like, I was told early on to chase my recovery like I chased my drug. Yeah. Right? Yep. So I would do anything to, you know, you snow or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, I would use old yeah. needles if I didn't have it, like, whatever, you know, the list goes on and on of the things that I would do to get high. Right? So like, I'm gonna change my recovery like I did that. So there's a, you know, coronavirus going around. I'm not gonna let that deter me from going to a meeting. You know what I mean? But I do got a thought. Yeah. Listen to this one. Yeah, here's the hit. Chase, chase social distances like you would, <laughs> like you would your drug use. Chase trying to be 
you know, practical and smart like you would your drug use I'm, I'm when it comes to this to epidemic. I'm reckless about it, like running around I know just just saying, I'm just and hugging everybody and, like, and on and Yeah, come on in and party, man. Yeah, what, you bring donuts? Come on. Yeah, come on in. Yeah. <laughs> Are you done? I'm Chauncey. I'm an addict. Sorry. It's awesome. Um, yeah. So I'm. I'm. So I get a feeling like I'm scared that you know, since meetings are closed down, that some people might use it as excuse, and I feel yeah. sad for that. Oh, this is a great uh, meetings not open. This is a great. Um, so what do we tell somebody right now? What are we gonna say? This is important. This is a big hit right here. What do we tell somebody who you who they're gonna go use and, and risk? Death. Well, your next use can be your last use. But what are we going to tell them to do instead of that? They're going to come they out. The they're going to get on a network. live meeting. They're going to Google it. So get online. Uh, yeah. And, and find a meeting that. online if nothing else. I don't care if they look at Care Talks. Look at something. Uh, care so, Talks so, is good, <laughs> by the way, so, man. So, look at somebody who's sharing some experience and hope. So... You know, yeah. Go to social to media. That's what you do. Come to Hatcher. Well, we're trying. We're, we're, at this moment, we're trying to <laughs> just invite folks that are in, in crisis, at risk. Yeah. They need they need immediate service to prevent them from using. Yeah. We're open for that. Right. We're trying to limit those that want to come up in here just for social yeah. to be seen. You know On what I mean? Saturday, that was perfect when their meeting, GOD's meeting, was closed down. They came and held it at our at Hatcher, oh. and that was a really good, you know, a good meeting. Huh? Yeah. So all the places are shutting down. They're coming here to host yeah. meetings. Well. There again, during this unknown period on how this thing's going to shake down, you know, we're, we're trying to do spacing, social distance, you know, we, we don't want to see a we don't want to see a run on McShin with thousands I don't of think people. One person up from their meeting, and it was from across town. I don't think one person missed it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I'll be they all came here. That's all came awesome. here. Yeah. That's awesome. We might have now. Now we're trying to encourage people to meet outside where you're not so close together. All right. Get them germs out in the sunlight. Hopefully that'll kill them. Consider And then another thing uh. is even if they're not going to meetings, two people can hold an NA meeting. There you go. That's true. That's two people right. People can hold an NA meeting. Or any kind of any kind of pathway meeting. Doesn't have to be NA. It can be any twelve step or any other pathway. You can go sit somewhere three feet apart and have a meeting. Yeah. Okay. Do, the, do the toe like, pop coming and like going. Like I said over here, if you can't, if all the meetings say all the meetings are shut down, right? and you don't have access to online or whatever i mean go find a phone somewhere and call somebody mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Call yeah. Your yeah. Network. Yeah. Like, a lot of things are last... phone meetings yeah. phone right. meetings they internet do, the Zoom. online meetings are becoming a lot more prevalent mm -hmm. right now um but like you said not everybody has access to the internet yeah i want to make it clear to everybody out in the viewer world we're not here representing any type of 12-step program, fellowship, pathway. This is the McShen Foundation Inner Circle Group Discussion. There are a lot of pathways out there, a lot of online mm -hmm. pathways, plenty of 12-step pathways and meetings, you know, online and everywhere else. This just, this ain't one of them. So I'm not up here representing anybody's particular pathway. It's the McShen Group right. discussing our current crisis situation. What goes through the minds of a new person, new in recovery, and I think we're doing a great job sharing what goes through your mind as a new person as we navigate early recovery from substance use disorder and our national crisis, the coronavirus. Yes, Josh. My name is Josh. I'm not, um, the coronavirus, man, I, I, I can't see being scared of it, man. Everybody talks about even the social distancing, man. And I just, I can't even bring myself to do it. I, I was... Well, you're a rock climber. You climb upside down. So why are we having to meet so, out on the trail? So trailer? you're you're an extra risk taker. You say do them outside. We can do it. We can do them on the trail. Yeah, Let's but go. it is serious business. <laughs> it to, is to those in the, the the dangerous category. Oh, but you know, even if the coronavirus got a hold of me, I would die clean. That's well, that I'd be, be the happiest person in the world because I would die clean. Uh -huh. All right, just like if you were clean climbing a rock and fell Absolutely. off, you dry clean. How many y'all want to die clean? That's pretty good, good number there. My hand, I'm sure I'd rather die clean than you too. Yeah. <laughs> what I've learned inside these groups, man, I, I I don't want them to be taken away because of some virus that's out here scaring everybody. I wasn't scared when I was getting high. 
No. I'm not going to be scared to go to a room and go up to somebody that I've made a bond or a connection with and give them a hug and say, hey, how was your day? Man, if I get it, I get it. Well, here's the My hit. higher power has something planned yeah, but, out for Yeah, but me, listen, that's it. listen, I ain't scared either. I'm a Marine. I'm, I'm trained <laughs> to run into machine gun, jump on grenades, but... I don't want to be stupid or irresponsible because yeah, right. my, my actions might affect somebody else. Right. So, I mean, we can take precautions. I don't want my mom to die. Well, yeah, so in, the, in, in the spirit of responsibility, so yeah, that. that's why we do the, the distances. Mm -hmm. That's why it's we're having this us, meeting. It's for the people who yeah. are high risk. Yeah, know, we do have to remember. No, I, I, I get it, but I, it, it's also the mentality. I got of, you. you. Know, I'm, we, 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 we share that shit. That's what it's for, man. You know? You're right. This is how we really are. That's what we're thinking. What else we got? Miles, you keep talking about to eject you out the meat, man. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Miles. Miles. How many of y'all think this crisis will come to pass? I do. I'm, I'm certain it will, but guess what ain't never going to come to pass? What? You having the disease, yeah. mm -hmm. substance use disorder. Yeah. That's all you're going to be. It was here before the virus. If you live through this process, it's going to be here after the virus. So, our disease has killed more than this coronavirus. It has. does, and it has, and it will. Oh, You're right about long. that. Mm -hmm. A yes. preventable illness. A preventable, a preventable illness that long. policy long. and funding can cut back by 50%, but there has to be the will <coughs> of those involved with the funds and the policy to do so. Mm -hmm. yeah. As long as we keep acting like this is an illness of choice, we're going to keep getting those results. So. We're not doing a good enough job demonstrating not only the effectiveness of inexpensive long-term recovery, the, the need for the policy changes and in, in the funding, but as individuals, we have to personally, you know, stop acting out. You know, our, our illness when we're out there in active addiction, we have a ripple effect that affects everybody. Mm -hmm. In recovery, we got a ripple effect that's going to affect everybody in a positive way, and that's what we got to shoot for here. You hear me? And part of that civic engagement, civic responsibility, and, and, and listen to these health professionals during this crisis of ours. Pay attention to these people. They got the best brains in the world working day and night on what to do and what not to do. We want to be mindful of that. And you got some good financial wizards trying to correct the financial situation. You got to be mindful of that. Granted, we probably won't be in the, the zone that benefits the most from that, but maybe we take one for the team on this one. Well, speaking of taking one for the team, I know I went to the grocery store today, and uh, I got to wait another week to go grocery shopping. Well, you got free food stamps out of Hampton, man. Look, because I'm telling you, them shelves were naked when I went in Listen, there just a little while ago. I got you. <laughs> Any, anybody ain't got enough food in their house as a freezer. We got a freezer downstairs full of Brunswick stew. Oh, okay. Everybody here can take two quarts of Brunswick stew home with you tonight. Oh, no no cough. <laughs> and it's good. That's the best batch we ever had, man. We just had our Brunswick stew event a few weeks ago so we got plenty of Brunswick stew. All right. Probably enough to feed everybody here for six months. <laughs> we got a big freezer. What else we got? How was group today? It was, was it good? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Was, it, was it worth coming to? Yes. Was it a good topic? Yes. Yeah. Did we pick up on anything? Any tips? Yeah. We're going to stay motivated the rest of the day. We're going to yeah. keep a positive attitude. Yeah. Woo! We're going to do social distancing, <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. You're going to get out the smoke shack, stay away from each other. Now, when you're yeah. out there smoking and you're blowing the smoke and you watch it go over people, uh, just think if you had the coronavirus coughing, that would probably oh, that would probably be the hit zone. Oh. That, that don't mean you'll get it, but it, it just ain't a safe place to be, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, a little food for thought there. I got Francine all messed up thinking about that. <laughs> Are we good? We good. Here's what we do. We're gonna we're gonna stay seated. We'll just cross our arms and close with the serenity prayer, all right? All right. All right. All right. Yes, sir. Don't wanna be hugging on each other. <laughs> Ready? Yes, sir. All right. God. 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 Clearing us the serenity. To accept things we cannot change. Courage to change things we can. And the wisdom to know death, just for the day, keep coming back. Work is work it, dive it over. All right, y'all have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Well done.